Ferrari has taken the challenge of the 2025 Formula One World Championship very seriously. Nothing has been left to chance, with a truly great finishing effort. After all, if the goal is to compete for the victory from the very first race of the season, the Australian Grand Prix, which will take place at the Albert Park Circuit in Melbourne, nothing else could have been done. The shakedown of the Ferrari on home soil last week revealed the shapes of the SF25, the weapon through which the Marinello team intends to bring home at least one of the two world titles. We have already discussed the new pull rod front suspension in depth. Similarly, Ferrari's 2025 car has a new roll center on the front axle. Starting today, during the Bahrain preseason testing session, the Italian team will validate the 677 project. Hard work is expected, as the team of engineers led by Loic Serra, the Frenchman who came from Mercedes, must move from subjective judgment to objective evaluation. The first feedback from the Fiorano shakedown was very positive. However, further study on performance is needed, prepared with simulator updates after last Wednesday's data collection review. Before starting today's analysis, let's recall an interesting factor regarding the aggressive approach Ferrari has chosen to adopt. Frederick Vasseur himself mentioned it. The target for Ferrari is to be competitive right from the start. In other words, to push the accelerator. And it is precisely for this reason that, according to information gathered and reported by various Italian news media outlets, we know that the first update package, unless schedule changes due to potential correlation issues, is expected for the third race of the season at the Japanese Grand Prix. The side pod area is the second most complex area of the Italian car, which has undergone several modifications compared to the previous model. In this case, the aerodynamics group, led by the excellent Diego Tondi, provided guidelines and objectives to pursue, while the other F1 departments had to work hard to rearrange several components in order to fit them within the new side pod volumes. Observing the comparison with last year's car, the first thing that stands out is the volume of the side pods, reduced by several cubic millimeters. This is a significant slimming down, especially considering that the change took place in relatively few months. First of all, we notice a partial change in philosophy regarding the management of turbulence and consequently, the outwash effect. The highest part of the side pod, where the shell logo is located, shows a larger flat surface area that forms the so-called vertical wall. On the Ferrari SF24, this area consisted of a more curved surface, with more pronounced transition angles between the vertical wall and the top of the side pod. On the new car, the so-called side wall continues up to the point where the Ray-Ban logo is located. While on the 2024 car, in that area, the surface had returned to being completely three-dimensional. The goal of this change is to improve turbulence management. In fact, the front tire generates a large amount of turbulence behind it. We have often observed the traces left by the use of flow viz, which, as it spoils, shows that in the indicated area, the fluid tends to be quite chaotic. Reducing the curvature helps the fluid stay more attached to the surface, especially at different yaw angles, when the Formula One car moves with a certain steering angle. A greater undercut allows for more efficient cleaning and at the same time greater flow stability that brushes the side pods at different yaw angles. This theme is crucial. The goal is to stabilize the fluid in different driving conditions so that the turbulent mass generated by the front wheel does not disrupt the flow control that moves toward the rear. Of course, always within certain limits, because regardless, a significant change in the yaw angle will still cause some disturbance. Since the volume has been reduced, from the intake section onwards, the Ferrari no longer has such a strong downwash area. The images highlight the reduced downward curvature of the initial portion of the side pod just below the air intake section. To be clear, just below the mirror support. This in itself announces a greater airflow toward the rear a move that allows the fluid mass in its path to stay at a more constant vertical Z coordinate. Shifting the focus to the undercut area, we notice its increased volume by a few millimeters, both due to the reduction of the side pods and the different configuration of the intake openings. If we carefully observe the trend related to the intersection of the side pod with the floor, we will also notice several shape changes, especially in the initial area, and deeper inward scoop present on the Ferrari SF25 single-seater. The technicians and engineers at Scuderia Ferrari have tried to create a more pronounced curvature, 
to generate a stronger pressure gradient in that area. This measure results in more outwash effect to better control the turbulence from the front tire. At the top of the side pods, finally, there is a particular solution that somehow takes inspiration from the F-175. We are talking about a hint of the side pod tubs. We can see the creation of a ramp, once again useful for limiting the effects of yaw angle variations and, in particular, static pressure losses. Ferrari is now preparing the garage at the 5.412 km Bahrain International Circuit in Sakir, where the 2025 Formula One preseason test begins on Wednesday with the first direct comparison among the four title contenders, McLaren, Ferrari, Red Bull, and Mercedes. Three days of testing in Bahrain, and perhaps it will be possible to measure the actual competitiveness of the cars in conditions that are not yet the cold winter temperatures of Europe. It will be interesting to analyze the data that will emerge as the testing session unfolds at the Sakir circuit, which we will thoroughly do in the next videos. All the rumors about the large time gap Charles Leclerc would inflict on Lewis Hamilton during the SF25's debut will be dispelled. There was a difference, but not to the extent that was reported, especially since there had been different development work done between the two drivers. For now, the simulator data shows that the SF25 single-seater is about four-tenths better than the Ferrari 2024 F1 car, a credible value when comparing Charles Leclerc's times at the Fiorano circuit last week. With the SF24, the Monegasque driver had set a time of 56.21, while on February 19, he improved to 56.06. These numbers, however, do not really say much at the moment, because it's not so much the growth value that matters, but the actual differential measured against the competitors. The first emerging data suggests that there is still significant room for development in a technical regulation that, in its fourth year, has not yet reached its limits. Therefore, we can expect substantial growth from the ground effect cars. Ferrari had the courage to redesign the car, adjusting its technical concepts to the best competitors. With the adoption of the pull rod front suspension for clear aerodynamic purposes, more than mechanical, and redistributed the masses by moving more weight to the rear, which will need to be balanced by front ballast. It also adopted a shorter gearbox and moved the front wheels further from the side pods with a different arm inclination, giving the impression of a longer wheelbase, though all teams are at the regulatory limit. As we mentioned during the presentation of the SF25, the miniaturization work on the rear suspension, which remains a pull rod design, is interesting. The anchor points for the arms were changed to find geometries more suitable for a broader range of adjustments, aiming to fine-tune the car and make it more versatile than the SF24, adapting better to the varying characteristics of different tracks. 